session. And the Green Machine all set to take on the web in a game with plenty of Atlantic 10 feel. And we welcome you back, Matt Martucci, my tag team partner, Tim Scarborough. If we learned anything from our first session, Overseas Elite is still Overseas Elite. Huh. What we could see uh, from this night session, maybe an All-Atlantic 10 second semifinal tomorrow. Yeah, the way it's looking, obviously three of the four teams are from the Atlantic 10, and we have a great Atlantic 10 matchup right now. George Mason alumni versus Richmond alumni. Both teams have a lot of people in the, fan, in the stands, so it should be a good matchup. Best Virginia Overseas Elite have already advanced thus far here in Richmond. They'll meet tomorrow at 5 o'clock. It's still to be decided. Green Machine to the web and then Ram Nation, the host team against Team DRC. Never have to worry about atmosphere here at the Siegel Center. And both of these teams very familiar with what this atmosphere looks like. Though the web in its first year competing at TBT ended up organized along with uh, Chris Mooney staffer Mark McGonigal and then former players TJ Klein and Chandra Jones. Well, plenty of guys that you and I have seen scar over the years in the Atlantic 10 and uh, have certainly made their mark playing for the Spiders. Man, Chris Mooney would win the Atlantic 10 with this group. <laughs> you look at Allen and Jones, Klein, Harper, and Justin Harper, one of the top players to ever play at Richmond, in my opinion. Gonzalez, nice core group of guys. This is going to be a very good matchup when you think about what the Green Machine is bringing. And the George Mason alumni comprised of some of the guys from that 0506 Final Four team. And put together by former team manager and now a George Mason Athletics equipment manager, Johnny Coleman. Brian Pearson right there, boy, what a great player. He's a TBT alum. He's played on Team Fancy for most of the time. Decided to switch teams and play for the alma mater. It would be interesting to see how this plays out. And yeah, we were told it took a, a little bit more convincing for them to get Pearson but they were finally able to do it and happy about the fact that they did. Yeah, Team Fancy used to take care of them. Also played with DMB's finest in 2015, so good to see him back in the green and gold. The web in blue, green machine in white. And green machine oh. band already letting them know they're in the house. They, nice backdoor cut from Klein, who could do a little bit of everything in his time at Richmond. You're going to see the back door be open tonight because they run that Princeton offense, that Chris Mooney kind of hybrid Princeton offense. And all these guys are very cerebral players here for this web team. They're going to get those opportunities. Brian Allen picking up right where he left off a year ago in TBT 2018. He's a member of Louisiana United. Had the ball in his hands running towards the basket before the whistle blew in a game against Overseas Elite. He would have won the game had he got that layup. Terry Allen puts the web back on. Following Campbell. And people who follow NCAA basketball closely know that name from that 06 Final four, George Mason team. He and Will Thomas, number 34, were both on that team, and they were really good during that stretch. And Thomas, the guy that they felt like was the missing piece for their roster when he agreed to sign. Oh, Chandre Jones taking it in there. He's not the biggest guy. He loves to go inside. Allen, look at the world to set up scrub. Now Phil Scrub, one of the, the few ringers, along with Austin Freeman on this George Mason alumni team. Harper taking the contact, and will go to the line. And Justin Harper drafted out of Richmond to the NBA, and playing overseas is just a terrific player. 
Six foot ten, 29 years old. And getting him on this roster, you know, I was thinking about my, my all region team, and you know, I had to give Justin Harper serious consideration. Definitely still looks the part, Justin Harper. Had a really successful senior season. You wind it back about eight years ago, 2011. He and Kevin Anderson with a one-two punch. Kev, Kevin Anderson now an assistant at Liberty University. Yeah, I was about to say, some folks still forget some of the supporting cast members. Kevin Smith. Dan Giroux. Some of those other guys. Dan Giroux is a coach as well. But ended up going all the way to the Sweet 16. And Chris Mooney, of course, a Philly guy. Played at Princeton, the head coach at Richmond. Allen is from Largo, Maryland. Zip code check for him. <laughs> now that Phil Martelli is gone from St. Joe's, is, is Chris Mooney the most tenured? I believe he is in, in the, the A-10. Wow. In the A-10. Buckets all over the place. Here in Richmond, that time Austin Freeman, who played at Georgetown. Gonzalez one and done on the drive. A lot of splashes here early. Bring your poncho. Yeah, no kidding. Scrub has missed his first two attempts. Oh, nice move, Little TJ. high, low entry. And Austin Freeman, outstanding. Guard from Georgetown was stuck on a mismatch with T.J. Klein, and T.J. recognized it and went to work inside. You know what I've noticed first thing looking at T.J. Klein? Just the change in his body. Yeah, he looks very slim and, and lean muscle mass. Of course, his mom is the legendary Nancy Lieberman. You know, she's in, last I checked, I interviewed her about four years ago during a Richmond Old Dominion game. Of course, she played at Old Dominion, and obviously TJ was at Richmond at the time. She sat in with me and Mike Gleason, and she started helping us call the game. She was great. She's a great analyst, a great coach, one of the greatest women's basketball players of all time. I believe at the time she was in 11 different Halls of Fame. How many Halls of Fames are you at? Zero. <laughs> you and I have the same number. Okay. <laughs> How about Excellent. that? Good start for Freeman in the green machine. LG Gill, who's one of the Webb's ringers, although a, a local guy from Chesapeake, Virginia, active in the area. He played in the Atlantic 10 at Duquesne. Another Atlantic 10 guy, yeah. Duquesne for three years before transferring to Maryland. Pearson back in. Father and Campbell sits down. I'm looking for Mike Morrison. He's on my all-region team, six foot ten, center, sitting on the bench now. Well, Harper took the contact, a lot of contact yet, right there, and maybe an extra step in the process. <laughs> he totally altered the direction he was running. Usually, they call that a foul. Allen Brian, and chased down by Klein. Brian Allen certainly not shot. I was going to say no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hand on the trigger, ready to go. <laughs> Freeman able to track it down in the corner. And he looks good early on. Austin Freeman. Line drive jumper, but he cast it in. Give the former Hoya nine. And the green machine almost doubling up the web. Largest lead for them. Klein's first perimeter attempt. A few red shirts in here. Pretty good atmosphere early on. Have you ever been here for a black and blue game? That's the game between VCU I have not. and Richmond. Wow, that is a great atmosphere. I used to live here in Richmond, so I've attended those. That would require carrying enough of a profile to warrant calling <laughs> such a game. <laughs> I don't think I ever called one, but I was here as a fan, as, or as a media member, I guess. 
12-2 now, Green Machine run. Come on, Tucci, you know you have all kinds of juice in this business. <laughs> Magna cum laude to Syracuse. Let's, let's hope. Jones, nice step to the cup. Chandre Jones, when he and Kendall Anthony would play together. Kendall's about 5'7", five, 5'8", seven, five, and Jones at about 5'10". They were little, but man, were they tough when they put them on the floor together. How do you stay in front of the guards that small? It's hard. Nice turnaround, and there's Thomas, the lefty. Will Thomas can still get it done. Boy, was he good in that final, in that final four run. Thinking of the game against Connecticut in the regional final. Jim Laranega's group. Harper taking the contact. And an impressive start for Green Machine. Here in a mostly Atlantic 10 battle, TBT Richmond. TBT is taking over Chicago for championship week. Eight teams, single elimination, two million dollars, winner take all. August 1st through the 6th at Win Trust Arena. Visit thetournament.com slash tickets to secure your seats today. A little over 100 miles from Fairfax, Green Machine with the seven point lead, 17 to 10 on top of the web. Here in game three of round one of the Richmond Regional. Matt Martucci, Tip Scarborough. And uh, the Green Machine Band led by Doc Nix. Always pumped up. Love them, absolutely love the energy that they bring to a college atmosphere. This is something that you rarely see in July. It's a great atmosphere. And great to be in a gym with some quality basketball going on, that's for sure. I always feel like when you and I get to do this, we got an extra present under the tree mm -hmm. around holiday time. Yeah, it's certainly a treat. And getting this region, certainly one I'm familiar with. A lot of these teams, a lot of these, these A-10 teams that we call games for, as I call games versus Old Domin for Old Dominion as well, and Conference USA. So this is a, a real treat. And then getting overseas elite in our region, who could ask for anything more? One of two for Harper. Green Machine guys and GM Johnny Coleman really excited about the roster they put together. Well, that, that's, that is great help. Fake help, and then it's real help. But what you do, you try to show 
and discourage the guy from moving to the basket when there's a mismatch in the post. Clarence Armstrong whistles the foul. T.J. Klein. Well, most people will remember T.J.'s mom, obviously Nancy Lieberman, his dad Tim Klein, member of uh, the Harlem Globetrotters, longtime rival, the Washington Generals. Who knew he would be good at basketball with that, with those kind of parents? I mean, those genes. <laughs> how, how did that happen? <laughs> Very heady player, too. I mean, he's really smart. And I remember when he was uh, he transferred in from Albany, under-recruited, out of high school, transferred into Richmond. And Richmond wasn't really playing them very much. Then he finally got his chance, and they never looked back. They realized soon that he was one of their best players. And certainly their offense and really their whole game, because defensively he's such a good communicator, they just became a better team with him on the floor. And it wasn't just scoring the basketball, it was everything for T.J. Klein. Found himself uh, among the 810 leaders in a lot of categories, including points. You know he was triple team right there, right? Mike Morrison came over a little bit late, but in all, all intents and purposes, he had three guys guarding him, still score. All the Webb's field goals coming in the paint. Malcolm Bernard, who played at Xavier newly in for them, handling the basketball. Klein, ready to go. Felt like that one was going down. Still doesn't stay with his shot like he probably should. He's a pretty good outside shooter, though. Scrub, that's the best look he's had, and his first make. That's a three-point field goal by Phil Scrub. The defense, whoa. Phil Scrub, a native from north of the border, played at Carleton College up in Ottawa, in the province of Ontario. Give Brian Allen credit for whipping that pass across the defense, giving Scrub a wide open three. Very unfortunate last name for an athlete though, huh? Yeah, well, <laughs> but that's why you knock down shots. <laughs> yeah, you better. You make people forget your last name. <laughs> you better. Green Machine's largest lead. Gill getting dirty. And Bernard off the rotation, couldn't capitalize. Allen and Freeman have had the hot hands with a couple of made threes for Green Machine. Shot clock cut in half as we wind down the first quarter. Matt Martucci, Tim Scarborough, Pearson. Still unable to buy a bucket, foul in the lane. Ryan Pearson's game is kind of indescribable. But he just scores. He, what would you call him? He's not a perimeter player. He really doesn't play in the post. He kind of plays in the, around the middle of the floor. And he's got an array of floating left-handed shots that all seem to go in. Johnny Coleman called him an anomaly. Something that's, <laughs> you know, yeah. a little off of the standard deviation. Freeman threw that straight to the web. Freeman doesn't play for the web. Problem. Darian Brothers, another former Spider. That was his forte when he was in school. Knocking down perimeter shots. Pearson. Check that. Actually, Isaiah Tate. Another lefty. Double-digit lead of the game. Pearson with the back down. Tough start for him. He's about the only one for Green Machine. Yeah, the Green Machine is rolling right now. And there's not a lot of good shot selection at the web end, especially the last four or five possessions. It's been kind of come down and step into a contested three. Morrison with time winding down to close the first quarter. And Green Machine like its roster. I think we have the evidence right in front of us. Tate coming off the bench 
Hey, it feeling good. Green Machine, up big. Basketball tournament, the $2 million winner take all single elimination tournament is brought to you by Puma Basketball. And let's go inside the huddle. Presented by Puma, it's the web. Head coach Deron Giddings. They they put together a nice squad, Tooch. Like the kind of squad that can go pretty far, Tooch. I'm telling you. And it's not because they're up by 14. We thought about that earlier today. Well, yeah, that's Green Machine. They've outscored the their bench has outscored the web by itself. Freeman with the extension on the drive. Oh, and this lead keeps building. Another turnover, but Shandre Jones got knocked into the scores table. Tate got on the floor. That somehow carried him back to him. And I think that look from Shandre Jones just said it all. Lamar Butler also part of that Final Four team. For George Mason, 0506 and Roman the bench. And you can understand why Jarhan Giddings is upset with the official. That was a lot of contact. This guy got tackled and no call, and they run out and try to score at the other end. Shot clock down inside five for Tate. Brothers able to track down the board. I, I expect this Richmond team, the web, to get going though. And they, they have the talent. They just gotta get in sync. Right now they're a little out of sync. Just too many scoring options for them to, to be down the right. whole game like this. But they gotta get some stops though. See, it's a lot of that though, right there. Settling. One dribble, or, or one pass and the guy takes a contested dribble, dribble three. What does it need to be? It needs to be that Princeton offense that we saw in the first couple of possessions, where you, you got guys moving, you get ball movement, 
the people movement yeah, and I, make it difficult to guard. I was just going to say, Allen was one of those guys who ended up getting a backdoor layup. He's the one yeah, who gets Terry, fouled Terry, here. Terry Allen, yeah, not to be confused with Brian for Allen. For Brian Allen. And zero for the team in white. Lamar Butler. He was, he was pretty good in 2006 as well. You they, still, still have that Sports Illustrated cover? I do. Sweet surprises? <laughs> No, I don't have it, but, I, but that's an iconic sports cover, sports illustrated cover. Should have asked him before the game. Wonder how Jai Lewis is. Big Jai. Now Justin Harper's doing just fine. His first field goal of the basketball game to go with three free throws. Six now for Harper. Playing together and as a cohesive unit is just as important as the talent level in TBT. You, you have to play together. No one guy is going to win TBT for you. Jimmer oh. Fredette tried it, though, last year, didn't he? He had a really good team, but boy, was he special last year. Dwayne Glad blows the whistle. T.J. Klein takes a tumble. Goes on Brian Allen. Yeah, they compared adding Will Thomas. Green Machine did. Mm -hmm to almost uh, on a TBT scale, Kawhi Leonard going to the Clippers. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. They, they were really excited about the fact that he decided to play with the a rest of the George maker. Mason alumni. Yeah, yep. that's got to be a five, right? Nope. Green Machine Bench certainly trying to sell it. Their clock is a little faster than the real clock. Allen again settling perimeter. But at least it was a catch and shoot and not trying to dribble into someone, make space, and then step back and shoot a three. Tough shot. Campbell, little ward of Allen, short yeah. on the jumper. They are, they are not calling that. You can push off as much as you want. Good ball movement, brothers in rhythm, but left it up there. Nice tap by Harper and Klein, the recipient. Even though the shot didn't go, that rhythmic jump shot allowed for a putback because everybody is where they should be. When you play out of sync and out of rhythm, you don't even have a chance to get putbacks because you took a shot that people weren't really expecting you to shoot. Klein leading the web with eight. Jones nearly lost it. Fortuitous Karam, and <laughs> Allen takes advantage. You giving Chandre Jones an assist. <laughs> Splash, Allen. Chandre is taking a beating right now. So is T.J. Klein just took one in the chops. And for Lauren Campbell right to the lane. Was an 8-2 run for the web prior to that. Lauren Campbell is one of those people who everybody in America knew for about a month. I mean, that was a stretch where everybody was saying his name. Nobody knew who Lauren Campbell was outside of the, the, the CAA back then. But by the end of March, everybody knew who he was. Ryan Allen keeps doing what he's doing at TBT. They're going to remember his name, too. Brian, Brian Allen is a TBT stud. And of course, we talked about him being with that Louisiana United team last year. That, that team lost quite a few people. They lost players to the region, but they lost two good ones in Allen and also Morrison, number 22, for a green machine. Take a look at this. Last, it's a six or seven inch height advantage. And Allen takes, or rather, yeah, Brian, Brian Allen takes advantage of Chandre Jones. How many times do you think he's practiced that? A billion? Mm -hmm. is, that, is that a safe number? Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> you talked about Campbell. Solid career where was in the starting lineup for most of it. And was part of that Final Four run that included Lewis and Gabe Norwood, Will Thomas. Lamar Butler, obviously. Was Tony, was Tony Skin? Tony, was Sk Tony too? Skin yeah. was on that team, too. Tony's a coach at Louisiana uh, uh, La Tech. Louisiana Tech. Now Darian Brothers, welcome to the party. We got a couple of La Tech guys coming up on Team DRC. Alex Hamilton and Speedy Smith. 
And that's our nightcap against Ram Nation. And that, that's, a, that's a tough 2-7 matchup. That DRC team is well put together as well. Freeman now into double nice figures defense. after that make. 11 for Austin Freeman. Allen nearly traveled. Jones, plenty of numbers, four, four on one. one for the web. Brothers, can he cash? Yes, sir. Go to the window. Still a 10 point game, but they needed that. And that was a nice rhythmic three point shot in transition, a four on one. Nice find from Scrub. How oh, about that? Allen. Bottom dropped out of that. <laughs> Chance to get it back to single digits for the web. Gonzalez, nice hesitation, and Klein. That's TJ Klein moving without the basketball, finding himself behind the back door, and gets a package delivered at the doorstep. Well, credit Gonzalez with the assist. It's an 8-2 run by the web. Spinning it with the brothers three. They're down eight. Green Machine enjoying what's an eight-point lead. The band likes it, too. On top of the web, battle of A-10 alumni. Matt Martucci, Tim Scarborough. Not that long ago. It's been over a decade since Green Machine had their shining moment. Still fresh in people's minds, though. Whenever someone goes on a run, they say they did a George Mason 11 seed. Going through the final four, it beat UConn in the regional final, 86-84 in overtime. They had never won a tournament game, and much like that VCU team of 2011, there was a lot of pundits, Dick Vitale, that said they shouldn't be in the tournament. And they showed the world that, yes, Jim Laranega's group should have been in that tournament and was in that tournament, and they made an impression. You know, 53 of their 86 points that day against UConn came from players that are here either on the bench or on the floor. Brothers. And it hit a couple of threes. The other way we go. So a one on two, and you knew Allen was going to get a shot off. <laughs> you know, and that's why Jones gave up the, the foul right there. That was a giveaway. He's got two, and we really haven't seen a lot of foul trouble in TBT, you get six, and TBT again is a combination of FIBA rules, NBA rules, and NCAA rules 
and the NBA component is six fouls. Well, this is already the tenth game you and I have done together. Man, here, are you tired of me yet? No, not yet. <laughs> so, not ever. So, so you will be at some point. Is what you said? I'm saying not ever. <laughs> All right. Freeman with another 15 now for Austin Freeman, and has done it on five of six from the field. Nice pass. A little high low. Oh. And Gill able to take advantage. David Gonzalez has made a couple of next level passes. That was money right there. Pearson with the stutter step sold the contact and will go to the line. Yeah, back to that George Mason Final Four run. That was a UConn team that they beat that only had in its starting lineup Rudy Gay, Josh Boone, yeah. Denham Brown, Marcus Williams, Jeff Adrian, who played in TBT last night, came off the bench for that UConn team. I think Jim Calhoun had four or five NBA players on that team. They won 30 games that year. Yeah, that was, they were the prohibitive favorite, and no one thought they would lose a regional final to George Mason. But, you know, it's similar again to the VCU 2011 team. When they played Kansas with the Morris Twins, nobody thought VCU was going to win and get to the Final Four. It's like, all right, your run is over. You know, this Kansas team is really, really good. But, you know, they, they didn't let the name on the front of the jersey affect the game. We're going to get to see a lot of those guys in our nightcap tonight. Can't wait. Joey Rodriguez, the coach of that Ram Nation team. Brantford Burgess, Jamie Skeen, part of that roster. And, and we mentioned Joey's an assistant coach at FIU. Eric Maynard told me before this game that he's trying to get into coaching as well. Now, TJ Klein's going to make a good coach one day. Absolutely. But not yet. Still not playing yet. in Israel. Plenty in the tank. Yeah, and plenty tonight. He plays with joy, doesn't he? Seems like he's having fun out there. It's just a fun player to watch. Yeah. 12 now on 6 of 9 for him. Actually out nice shooting call. the rest of the team, TJ Klein. Winding down the first half. Screen machine lead has been big, but it's hovered now between six and eight for a little while. Largest lead of the basketball game, though, for them has been 16, and they'll push it back up. Scrub with another one. He says, don't you worry about my last name, Scarborough. <laughs> he said, I don't have much love for you. <laughs> A scrub at Green Machine doing damage. Seven outside shots have gone down. This just the latest. The atmosphere feels more like February or March. And that means we're doing something right here at the yeah. Richmond Regional. February and March is awfully fun, isn't it? Except for the weather up, up, <laughs> up here. 11-point lead for Green Machine. Here in a battle of Atlantic 10 alumni. Gonzalez gets the web back with its single digits. His first field goal of the night. Gonzalez has played a solid second quarter, giving out dimes and kind of getting the offense going. Now he knocks one down himself. And Allen says, Man. I'll see it and check. Oh, Gonzalez made a mistake there. You can't leave Allen to go double in the post against a guy who's not even looking to score because Allen's going to let it fly, and he's cash money when he's wide open like that. Nice find from Klein. Gill just couldn't finish. But do you see the, the cuts now? The ball is moving. We're not settling for just the first shot. And as a result, the offense has played a lot better in the second quarter for the web. And get it back to what they were doing early on. It's a simple game, Tooch. 
Basketball is a simple game. It's not like football where you got uh, so many plays and so many players and so many possibilities. There's only so many things you could do on a basketball court. Will Thomas back in. Gill trying to be forced into a miss. They're banging on the bleachers, something <laughs> fierce. It rarely works, though. No, <laughs> but everyone tries it. Nine second differential between shot and game clock, winding down the first half. All green machine. The web trying to stay within a reasonable deficit. That's pretty good defense right there. Scrub. And telegraphed to Gill, has Klein if he wants him. And oh, wanted it into himself. What a finish. He don't need Klein. Jones, can they cut it? And oh. can. <laughs> With Reggie Miller. Down to four. What a run by the web to close this first half. Five straight points. They walk into the break, down by just four. And we said, didn't think they could be down for long like this. Jones and Gill made sure of it. Stats and highlights coming from Richmond. Five straight points for the web to end the first half. Has brought them to within four here in Richmond. Green Machine up 
here at the Siegel Center. Matt Martucci, Tim Scarborough, this more of the game I think we thought we might get between uh, this George Mason alumni team and this Richmond alumni team. Feels like an A-10 battle. Yeah, and you know, early on it looked like the green machine was going to run away with it. But we kind of knew that the web had a little bit more up their sleeve. And once they started playing more cohesively, we knew they'd get back into it. They got five points in the last 10 seconds of that half. Probably shouldn't have happened. A little mistake offensively in terms of taking care of the basketball by Green Machine. But we have a great second half coming up. And this George Mason alumni team, Green Machine, they said they were excited about their roster early on. They were able to show us exactly why. I'm excited about this roster too. And Brian Allen is an assassin from downtown. And then he shares, because he cares, Austin Freeman from Georgetown with a bucket from downtown. And Austin had three three-pointers from the perimeter in the early part of that first half. But when they got it going, it was TJ Klein. And then this late bucket by Gill and the steal by Chandre Jones. Tooch, they forgot about Dre. Yeah, how about it? It's been a long time since that album came out. <laughs> Four-point lead for Green Machine. Stats coming, and not far off from our second half. Good one so far here at Richmond. Green Machine by what's just four here at halftime. And the atmosphere certainly supplied by this band and the folks that have made it out here. In this Atlantic 10 alumni battle, Matt Martucci, Tim Scarborough, one of what is four different regions going on today. Syracuse in full swing. 
Bayheim's army in action right now against We Are D3. And from what we're told, actually down. But three of the four teams have moved on. Gale Nation and then Brotherly Love and Armored Athlete have set up the second semifinal. And then that final of the region, Sunday, 4 p.m. Eastern. Love that Brotherly Love team. A bunch of guys out of Philly. For obvious reasons, I like them, but they're really good basketball players too. Franz Massonet, Novar Gatson, really good team. Yeah, and Armored Athlete, we talked about uh, some of the North Carolina presence in this tournament. Yeah. Uh, J.P. Tokato, who's uh, a, a former Roy Williams player from UNC, was on that roster. And they ended up uh, with uh, what was five different double-figure scorers today in their win. So they keep moving on. And uh, that Bayheim's Army team, uh, late in the first half, from what we're told, down by four inside of two minutes left. How about that? So, to the We Are D3 squad. So, so they could be in the Elam ending trailing, which is not the end of the world, but you certainly would rather be in the driver's seat going into the Elam ending. And day two of the Wichita region underway. The Fort Hood Wounded Warriors, late second half, trailing Golden Eagles, 40 to 35. So there's a, a lot of basketball going on. Salt Lake day two still to come as well. Here in Richmond, it was as many as a 16 point lead for Green Machine. And with the 5-0 run that David Gonzalez and his teammates able to put together, it's back down to four. And it feels like an even game when you look at those numbers. Oh, it's even now, especially with those numbers, but you know, Green Machine had that decided rebound advantage. But the web, that's the kind, that's the way they play with Chris Mooney. They're not big rebounders. They try to beat you in other areas. But they have to tighten up a little bit. The 52% field goal percentage is too much, too good for the Green Machine. The web will have to tighten that up defensively. But they're right back into the game thanks to that last 10 seconds of the first half where they got two steals that led to a dunk and a three. That bench encouraged over there. Jerron Giddings. And Mark McGonigal currently serves as the Director of Basketball Operations. He's the GM. Mark McGonigal will put it together. Got to share a lot of Philly and South Jersey stories on our call this week. Yeah, man. But Jerron Giddings' team right in position. Yeah, they're, they're, they're in more than position because of the momentum that they carried into the locker room. They didn't play that great, but yet they were only down four points. If they start sharing the basketball a little bit more like they did towards the end of that half and then pick it up defensively like they did towards the end of that half, they can win this game. And that's saying something because that Mason team, the Green Machine, was hitting on all cylinders for most of that first half. Apparently we have a, a clock issue at one end. I don't think the shot clock and game clock are supposed to look like that. Should it have letters on it? <laughs> the first, first clue. See Dwayne Gladden, longtime official. Yeah, good crews that we've had here tonight. Yeah, we've had some really good crews. Hayward Bostic, Dwayne Gladden, Clarence Armstrong, our officials right now. Ted Valentine in our early session. Tim Comer. Yep. Good guys. Tim Comer came up in the Big South when I was covering games at Liberty. He's in the ACC and other bigger leagues now as well. Well, it, on first attempt, they did the old, if it doesn't work, unplug it and yep. then plug it back in. Yeah, I've been doing that with my computer here all, all evening. <laughs> That was some technical issues. Yeah, well, thank, thankfully we have a, a reliable statistician in John Tobias who also does tech support. Been able to keep you on the internet and functioning. Well, we're looking for the numbers to reappear on the shot clock, but find the numbers for the basketball tournament. Just some of the breakdown of this 64 team field. Eight NBA coaches, oh, they're, they're coaches that play in the NBA currently, and one GM. Chris Paul was involved. 
where they got knocked out. Boogie Cousins. Evan Turner has been involved in the past. Jim Fredette, he had 23 Division I players who just graduated. 21 first-year TBT teams. 23 alumni teams. And we have a bunch here in this Richmond region. VCU, Richmond, George Mason, UMBC, Old Dominion. Just a, a, a great combination of talent and energy and, and fan participation. Nothing better than TBT. I was about to say, one of those first-year teams, Best Virginia moving on to play overseas elite. Yeah, I didn't even say them, did I? Who will emerge out of this one? Still remains to be seen. Somebody get the screwdriver in the socket set. We might be here in a, a while. Call, call tech support. Now that's an interesting picture. You have any tools that you could supply them with? Uh, They're trying to, to fix the other shot clock. I have a mouse. Uh, I don't know. You can't be shot clock MacGyver? <laughs> no, I'm not shot clock MacGyver. They need one, though, the way it's looking. Just, just the looks on their faces doesn't look like they got, got it solved, does it? I have a <laughs> stick of gum, some WD-40, and some matchsticks. Don't, yeah, don't, don't forget the toothpick. Yeah, yeah toothpick. It's always Maybe some forceps. Some things that you commonly use. And this will be interesting because we talked about the web having the momentum as we're getting serenaded by some Stevie Wonder from this very talented band. But the web, this is a momentum breaker right here. When you have a delay, when you're ready to play, you've got some momentum going into halftime. Now you have a delay, you're trying to warm up. It just throws you off, and it takes a minute before you can get that, that mojo back. That look, that I just thought they had it. Chandre Jones and LG Gill, the ones that put together that run. It was the Gill dunk. But it really started with Sean Dre's on-ball defense when they were dribbling out the clock. I felt, I felt like they had it just a second ago, but apparently not. And it's certainly hurting the momentum that Gonzalez and his teammates have built up. One of four different regions going on today. We already have four teams that have qualified for championship week at Chicago. And it's still to come. Round number two in Salt Lake City. Everline Drive and the LA Cheaters and then Team Fredette who overcame a big time deficit behind a monster night from former Houston standout Rob Gray as Challenge ALS. I know what you and I are doing when we get back to the hotel. We will be watching. But you know, Team Fredette almost got eliminated. Everline Drive almost got eliminated last night. And you have that L.A. Cheaters team, a, a Drew League team. Sons of Westwood went down to them. And uh, can you name this song, by the way? It was Living for the City. I, no, I would have just said it was superstition. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Living for the City, Stevie Wonder. Now our prize share by Zell. If uh, the momentum ends up going back the other way and the green machine holds on, here's what they would get. Lamar Butler getting a, a nice cut for being head coach, by the way. Yeah, right? That's, that's pretty generous. I feel like Johnny Coleman, the GM, if his experience is like everybody's GM, he should have uh, at least another digit on that. I mean, GM is so difficult. I mean, you, you have to get everybody here. You have to sign up people. Sometimes you even have to come out of pocket 
in terms of marketing and trying to raise money. I mean, there's just so many components of being a GM. I wouldn't want any parts of it. That's difficult. Do they have a portable shot clock now, I guess, becomes the, oh, and that's exactly what they're going to do. They get the plug in that they're going to set up, and there it is. And credit the facility staff here at E.J. Wade Arena at Siegel Center. Always have a contingency plan, too. If your parachute doesn't work, have a backup have parachute. Have another parachute. <laughs> Otherwise, close your eyes and pray. Yes. And that almost never works. No. <laughs> In no situation. Now the atmosphere certainly hasn't changed. The Green Machine Band has done oh, a great it's only, job. It's only going to pick it's, up. It's going to get better. Because the VCU fan base is going to start pouring into here, getting ready for the fourth and final game of the night. That's an interesting pairing. Team DRC in, in talking to their GM and Danny Long, very, very confident in their abilities tonight. Well, they should be. Very talented group. They've assembled. They continue to file in here at the Siegel Center. Should have the second half momentarily. It's Green Machine by four as we get ready to start the second half. Game three of our Richmond Regional here in round one. Matt Martucci, Tim Scarborough, mostly a George Mason alumni team. Though paced in the first half by one of their ringers in Austin Freeman. Austin was terrific from downtown. The way he was shooting, we thought everybody was going to get wet. Splash after splash. There, yeah, right there from the boondocks, Freeman, and then cutting to the lane. A typical John Thompson tough play up on the glass with the left hand. And they, he got them really off to a, a very, very good start. But again, right before the half, the Richmond team got back into it. Clarence Armstrong explaining to us that they had to make sure that they, they did have a, a, a shot clock that could be synced up right, with the other one. Synced. That's very important. 
Because you can't have one at one end saying one thing and the other one saying another. And, and that's not even like it's going to be a whole second. Even a millisecond off can change. You know how we in the sports world have, we, we have it down to the microsecond now it seems for everything, especially down the stretch and close plays. So naturally you want to make sure that thing is 100% in sync. Now the question becomes, does this quell the momentum that the web was able to build up? Yeah, because, we'll, because of the delay. We'll see. And they get the ball. They have a chance to score. They scored the last five. They can get a two or three here. Seven or eight points in a row. Making this a ball game. T.J. Klein, Chandre Jones, who wow. wastes no time. Harper hitting the offensive glass. Uh, nope. Seven straight. Since the end of the first half for the web. Two-point game. Very impressive lineup that they have out there, as is this one, Woo! the whirl and the baseline oh. for Thomas. Will Thomas going to work down that post. And it's interesting because you have Mike Morris over there, Morrison, and Will Thomas is still your starting post with good reason. This guy can still get it. Yeah, I don't know about your Mike Morrison all region team. It's not looking He's not so, getting the minutes. Not looking so great. Harper. Jones, good decision. Set up Gonzalez. The nice composure shot. in the lane. David Gonzalez playing a solid four game. Four year starter Gonzalez during his time in Richmond. As the crow flies, I think about nine miles between this arena and the Roberts set. I think that's about right. I guess depending on what what route you end up taking. Gonzalez, I believe, was one of Chris Mooney's first recruits back in 2006. And multiple time All Atlantic 10 selection, David Gonzalez. Shot clock down to seven here for Thomas. Ryan able to clean it. Chance to tie or take the lead. Gonzalez wants it, and he'll go to the line. Beautiful look away by Gonzalez to convince his defender he was giving it up. Kept it, turned the corner, got himself to the free throw line with a chance to tie this game. Still in the second team foul on the green machine. Still one more big game coming on this floor tonight. Oddly enough, David Gonzalez early in his Richmond career. His freshman year, March of his freshman year, felt like he needed to transfer. But well, ended up changing his mind and yeah. sticking around. Good for Chris Mooney. Good yeah. for David Gonzalez. It really. absolutely Good was. Decision. Because he had started to lay the foundation for what was coming after. Allen missed. And that he he missed that 2011 Sweet 16 team. Jones missed it by a few years, but the web in front. Thanks to the guard who has some roots in Texas, though his mom from Richmond. It's the first lead for the web since it was 6-3 early in the first oh, quarter. No. And hello, Sean Dre Jones. It's Dre Day all of a sudden. Absolutely. Now 10 for Jones into double figures. He and Klein pacing the web. Thomas loves that baseline oh, that's spin. Yeah. And Klein bumped him out of bounds. He definitely bumped him out of bounds. And it's a smart play, but it's a foul if the officials see you do it. You walk into the guy when he's a little bit off balance. See if we can see it right here. Now you see the bump, that's fine. But now, look where his feet are. He's taking up the space. He's continually walking towards uh, Williams, uh, Williams, Thomas, and as a result, he's forcing Thomas out of bounds. That's got to be a foul. 
Campbell, good touch. Fowler and Campbell brings it back to within two. Keep in mind, the web was down as many as 16. Jones just keeps going. <laughs> I love when Sean Dre Jones heats up. 10-2 run for the web. And that'll help from Allen for the green machine. Jones in full takeover mode. He has his moments, that's for sure. Follower Campbell hit with the personal. On the pass, though. What a, what a difference, though. All that momentum, they did maintain it, that they received at the end of the half. They were down double digits, but this web team did not waver. But they started playing differently, playing more smart. And as a result, got themselves back into this. Look at the drop off, Allen to Gill. And Allen and Gill are kind of similar players, both about 6'6, six, 6'7. Six, six, Good defenders, slashers. Very versatile. Well, the delay has not hurt the web. Allen unabated to the basket. 15 for him to cut it back to two. It hasn't hurt Brian, don't call me Byron Allen, either. Yeah, the spelling of his name, we talked about that today. The old Brian versus Byron Russell. He spells it B-R-Y-O-N, and even his friends sometimes call him Byron. It's Brian. They say, well, you should have spelled it differently. <laughs> Pearson, one-on-one -on -one with Gonzalez and Thomas. Staying with it, didn't even have to come down. We're tied. Only our second one of the basketball game. Allen wanted to break it and couldn't. Campbell wants to push the issue, and that went off of Clarence Armstrong. And, and Austin is going to get a, a tech because he's on the floor. You know, the officials are, are part of the court. So if that ball hits an official, it's a live ball. And it's just an unfortunate play. It happens, but the official can't, what's he gonna call? Yeah, and they don't they don't it's seem nothing, to under they yeah. don't seem to understand that. It's nothing that, that he can do about it. Austin Freeman's actually lucky he didn't get a technical. Yeah, he really is. Because he was on the floor and he was screaming at the officials. <laughs> Contact on Gill, so, trying to go up. You know, we Looks mentioned like Pearson on the foul. We mentioned the Pythagorean field, field, right? So that's Newton's laws of thermodynamics. No two things can occupy the same space at the same time. And that's what happened there. The ref was in the way. The ball was supposed to be in the space where the official was, Clarence Armstrong. Campbell able to come up with the steal. Brothers almost stole it right back. That was a little three-dimensional action for us right there, right? By thought the you, way, because you're gonna get some sweat on it. Update Tim Scarborough from yeah. Syracuse. Oh yeah, let's hear this. The top seed Bayheim's Army. Come on. Trailing by three oh. a couple minutes into the third quarter to the We Are D3 squad. Okay, it's the third quarter. If you would have said they were in Elam, I would have been concerned. Thomas gets fouled on the way in. The Philadelphia Flyer, Hakeem Warwick, pacing Bayheim's army right now, 10 points. Hakeem can still get it done. Yes, he can. See, 34, 35 maybe? Like you think about it, he was, I believe he was a junior the year they won the national title, which would have been 03. Wow. So he's a little right, he he's a little older than that. He's, he's late yeah. 30s. Allen off the curl. And great look. My goodness. If I, if I have a late game play, I'm going Brian Allen on the pin down double screen. Every time. Every time. Every time. He gets his feet set. That is cash. That green machine and Allen on a 7-0 run.
in the last minute and a half. They've reclaimed the lead here in Richmond. Well, the web was down as many as 16 points. This guy had something to say about it. Sean Dre Jones has the potential to dominate games at times because of his streakiness. And right now, he's trending upward in the positive direction offensively. He's got his team back in the game. They were in the driver's, not the driver's seat, but they did have the lead. But this is going to go down to the wire. We're going to have some drama in the Elam ending. Bayheim's Army and We Are D3 now tied at 48. More than halfway through the third quarter at Syracuse. In the Wichita Regional, day two of that one. Golden Eagles up 56-52 on Fort Hood Wounded Warriors. That's late third. I think Bayheim's in the building? I would assume so. Think Buddy Bayheim's in the building? You might come watch the boys. Also a pretty fair, fair <laughs> chance. Buddy probably thinks the team's named after him. <laughs> it's Bayheim's Army. His last name is Bayheim. And it's fun, though, if you're a, a big Syracuse fan. Yeah. And their latest addition, they actually added B.J. Johnson. Oh, yeah, from LaSalle. LaSalle. Wow. Yeah. But started his career at Syracuse That's and right. transferred. All of this, though, leading up to TBT Championship Week this coming week in Chicago. Wow, Chicago is going to be wild. It's already here. I know. You and I will be there for the dunk contest next Friday. Malcolm, Puma. Malcolm Bernard brings this back to within two for the web. Puma is sponsoring it, of course, and they have a few dunkers that they added into the mix. I believe we're going to have eight dunkers. Four TBT dunkers and then four wild cards. It's going to be exciting. All that at the home of the DePaul Blue Demons, the yeah. Windrust Arena. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing that building. Yeah, me too. Oh, yeah. Allen, one of the rare bad shots he's taken this game. Give it up. Bernard, nice find, and Gill punishes. <laughs> we know LG Gill can send it home. Nice flash, great delivery. Check that rim's vital signs. <laughs> Bernard right here. Thought he was going to not give it up. At the last minute, he dropped it off for LG Gill. And this is a nasty finish.
side. Once again, Gill becomes the third member of the web in double figures. Thomas okay, with a Will. response. Okay, plus Will. the foul. Will Thomas has put on the hard hat and the lunch pail. He has gone to work. Punch that clock. Two hands. Look at this, Coach. He didn't care who was in the way. He was going up with two hands with authority. Got to punctuate that with the free throw. Sixth lead change of the game to go with three ties. Will Thomas has shown some quickness on that post a few times tonight. Still got it. Now, this is the true Princeton offense right here. Dribble. They're going to they play on. Wow, I thought they might get TJ Klein for a second. Trying to extract his hand. But you see, you see that Princeton set right there that they were running. That's what they need to do more of. Just a series of reads and cuts, dribble handoffs. That's when this group was at its best. If you like offense, this has been a fun basketball game. Yeah. Just, just a lot of talent on the floor, though. And a lot of the guys on the floor, we remember when they were college players, and they were all pretty good players. But now, you know, 23, 24, 26, 27 years old, they're grown men, and they're much better. That's part of the reason you and I love coming back to this every year. It's, yeah. the, it's the where are they now for college basketball players. Yep. You get to find out what a, a lot of guys you love to watch at a high level are doing on the pro level. Thomas, good separation. I know what Will Thomas is doing. He's oh, giving out buckets. A lot is the oh, answer. Man. He's into double figures. 11 now for Will Thomas. Line, nice drop what? off, and Brothers. What a pass. Great cut by Brothers, but again, the, the back door will be open. Father and Campbell stayed oh. with it. Foul oh. on Klein and the line. And this right here is grown man basketball. Clear him out. And then TJ tried to retaliate, but he gets tagged with the personal, much to his chagrin. The, the look of disbelief on his face was comical. Campbell actually benefited from that strip. Otherwise, he had nowhere to go. Yep, you're absolutely right. And instead, he's going to get a chance to tack on a three-point play. Consider it done. And wouldn't you know it, some of the most senior members of this Green Machine team, the ones that have gotten them back to the lead. Jones, good look. Not for long, says Chandre. Down to one. Jones now with 15. His third made three of the night. Keep the heads ringing. Thomas with the shot clock down to nice 12. Block. Gill got a piece. Here we go. Five on four here. Chance to get the lead back. Okay. Bernard says we'll take it. Slugfest right now, Tooch. Punch, counter punch. Foul on Bernard at this end. Not much of a difference in the way these two teams are going at it. Nice find along the baseline, and Bernard sends it home. Believe it or not, Malcolm Bernard's first field goal of the night. But was about to say, not much offensive discrepancy. <laughs> it's been close. I mean, every stat, it seems like the way this game is going, I mean, you can flip a coin right now. Might even come down to the foul line, where Green Machine has been perfect. 10 of 10 now as a team. 66% shooting in this quarter. For the web, 60% for Green Machine. Yeah, it's been an efficient quarter for both teams now. The first miss, right on cue. 
<laughs> Second time I think that that's yeah, happened you, tonight. Wow. Talked about perfect free throw percentages. And here we are. And that's why in baseball you never talk about a no-hitter. Tate, nice curl to get himself the shot. If you happen to tune in late, four ties, six lead changes. Green Machine led by as many as 16. The Webb's largest lead has been four. Oh, TJ Klein is not in the game. That pass was to him. <laughs> he just he happened <laughs> to be standing, he's standing up briefly. He's coaching and helping his team. <laughs> he's got he just, just has to team. laugh. <laughs> Nothing else he could do. <laughs> he should have caught it and shot it. I don't think anybody would have noticed. <laughs> Certainly, Allen didn't notice that he wasn't in the game. Pass it to him. Inside our final minute of the third quarter, there's Allen breaking the tie. Brian Allen is the real deal. Got 21 now. He's five for eight from downtown. He's been terrific. Two second differential between shot and game clock. Third quarter coming to a close. Jones wanting to put a stamp. And Brothers oh. cleaning the glass. Look what I found. They still got time though, Tooch. And wow. Freeman draws yeah. the contact and a blocking foul. And we'll send him to the line. Yeah, that's not a good foul. I mean, he's got nothing. And then you try to take a charge. If it works, fine. If it doesn't, you're going to give him two points. Freeman, who had the, the big first half, hasn't really done much in the second. But honestly, hasn't played a ton of second half minutes. No. Jerron Giddings on one side. Lamar Butler. Who's spearheaded, or at least was one of them, on the Mason Final Four run on the other. And that's the end of the third quarter. Green Machine on the strength of this man, Brian Allen, headed to the fourth quarter with a lead here in Richmond. The basketball tournament, the winner-take-all single elimination $2 million tournament is brought to you by Puma Basketball.
Now every second matters at this point. It's not like our overseas elite matchup that felt like it was over <laughs> midway through the second quarter. It was over when they started. <laughs> but, you know, you look at Austin Freeman with the ball. He's got number one, and he's got one point this half. He had 15 in the first half. He was carrying the load. We did that package, saw what he was doing, but he has been awfully quiet here in the second. Nice hands. Allen able to pick it away. 10th green machine turnover. Bernard lost it himself. Stay at this end. Both teams still very efficient overall, especially from the field. 53% for the web, 54% for Green Machine. A yeah, high-level basketball game. It really is. And not just spectacular plays, great basketball play. Allen had a mismatch, but Morrison rotated over on the weak side. Allen has been their automatic bucket. And another one. LG Gill is a pretty good defender, too. Yeah. Brian Allen was toying with him there. Jones knows that angle and knows Jones this building. Jones. He's played in a few black and blue games in this building. Campbell oh, gets it punched out. Gill says no. Jones opportunistic oh to the goodness. cuts. And we're tied again. Chandre Jones is a killer, an assassin. Fifth tie to go with seven lead changes. We were excited about this one at breakfast this morning for good reason. Freeman went one and done from the perimeter. Really quiet second half, only one point for Austin Freeman after 15 of the first half. Nice. Gill looking for the lead. Gill didn't look ready to shoot the ball when he caught it. It was almost like he was surprised. Tate taking the contact, foul on Harper. Yeah, this is high level basketball right here. You talk about guys playing, laying it all out. $2 million is one thing. You gotta get through these games to even think about the $2 million. And it's obviously in a tournament situation, you wanna survive and move on, but it's really tough to do sometimes. I'm thinking about this next game. We have a 7-2 matchup. Home team, VCU, Ram Nation. There's no guarantees, bro. This DRC team is for real. They're good. And they have, they have closers. They have guys that... Closers. That's yep. an interesting way to put that. You're right. That's, that's a lot of what this is about. I agree. How many guys do you have that are, are good in those situations that could finish? is going to get an Elam Ender under their belts in this one. What a slugfest. What turned out to be what we thought the web was going to get run out of here the way Green Machine was playing earlier. But they are a resilient group. And they've turned this into a, quite a game. High, low, Klein and Harper. Nice unselfish play, and they lead again. Klein couldn't wait to get that one up. Wide open, great delivery by Harper. Recognizing the triple team, finds Klein on the perimeter by himself, splash. The web Swiss Army knife now with 17. That was his first three. Freeman with an answer. There he is. He was quiet. Maybe that bucket will awaken him. The seesaw goes back to Fairfax, Virginia. <laughs> Jones representing the web. Three minutes into the fourth quarter. Matt Martucci, Tim Scarborough, and uh, Phil Scrub making an appearance here in the second half. Just his third field goal. It's a big one, though. Pushes this to three. Gonzalez. Shot clock cut in half. 
Harper has been quiet, finding Klein again. And a second straight three for TJ. And you have to love the playmaking ability of all the players on the web. They see each other, you see the cut. He could have hit a cutter and decided to hit Klein for a splash. And Tate gets bailed out by Gill in the corner. And I said in the first half, too, they're just so much better when they're running their Princeton continuity because they're all good decision makers, and that's what that offense is. It's a series of reads and decisions. Take two for two from the line tonight. It's that first one. And what I'm talking about here, well, Klein got that one, but the second one was there was a cutter going to the basket. And that's the same shot there. Or actually, that's not. It looked like a replay with Klein hitting both those threes. But there was a guy cutting to the basket when Klein caught that second pass that could have gotten a layup, but everybody dove with him defensively and left Klein on the perimeter. And great to see two guys that didn't even play together at the same time at Richmond be that much on the same page. But they're both immersed in that offense though. Yeah, they know. And they're both cerebral players. So if you're making the right basketball play, it doesn't really even matter if you even know the guy's first name. Tough trip to the line for Tate. Yeah, that was. Came up empty. Well, he hit one of two. Jones end up getting fouled by Morrison. So and now we're a minute and four away from Elam, or a minute away from the Elam ending potential. Next dead ball under the four minute mark. One point game. And it'll be interesting to see who tries to play to make sure they get that lead. In other words, maybe not even take a quick shot or maybe try to get a two for one. Lots of strategy involved here. Harper. Man, that was a pretty good look. It was, and you, you got to wonder if they were thinking that, trying to get a quick one there and try to get that last possession before the Elam ending scenario. Pearson very quiet tonight. Actually does not have a field goal until now. So that jinx works both ways, right? You talk, you talk them into a basket. Apparently it does. <laughs> Jones. Blow by and composure just couldn't get the finish. So now Green Machine can hold for one score and then maybe commit a foul. They only have one foul just to stop the clock to make sure Richmond, the web, doesn't get another shot. Pearson, not so much for that. So now you're in the same boat. The web takes their shot and then makes sure Green Machine doesn't get another shot. Gonzalez wants tie. Klein with wow. the bucket. And they're within one, no. 22 for T.J. Klein. Now I would foul. If I was the web, I wouldn't let them get another shot. Yeah, you can. They only have two team fouls. Yes. Just make sure they're not shooting. They're going to play it straight up. See, this is a mistake. And Freeman gets the bucket. And now, if you're Green Machine, you definitely want to stop the game. There you go. And they do. And I feel like the web should have done that. It cost them. Allen hit with the personal. But the target score going up on the board. We've reached Elam ending time here at the Siegel Center. In a game that feels like it should be played in March. We get it in July. Green Machine hanging on. Can they close and move on to round two?
We've reached that time at the Siegel Center. How's the Elamandic work? Uh, first dead ball under four minutes. Game clock stops, set the target score. Leading team score at eight. And first team to get there wins. Standard stuff, right, Tim Scarborough? Yeah, we're pretty used to it by now. But you have to put yourself in a good position before you get to this situation right here. And I feel like the web blew a major opportunity. Instead of being down three points, they could have just been down one point if they would have just stopped the game. But they kept playing as if we weren't under the four-minute mark. And now they are 11 points from the target score when they could have been just nine points from the target score. Brothers with a great start. And now they're only eight points from the target score. <laughs> nice shot. Darian Brothers with his forte. Allen. Good contest. Changed that shot. Darian Brothers. Great offensive score and then a great defensive play at the other end. Woo. And Jones. Chandre Jones. Jones right now is a handful. The web six points away. Here in a familiar place. Nine miles down the road from the Roberts Center. Thomas, and it gives Green Machine the lead back. Are you kidding? Sixteen now for Will Thomas. Klein in on Pearson, cut off and nearly threw it away, and Jones knocked it out of bounds. Turnover on the web. Klein over-penetrated that time. Thought he was fouled, but that pass was desperation. He would have been better served even calling a timeout or trying to throw it off of someone's foot or something. But he threw that one up for grabs, and 90% of the time, that's not a good sign when you are just throwing up a lob. The defense is going to deflect it or even steal it, and that's what happened. Scrub going to the bucket, sent away. Harper. Great play. And Gill stepping in the passing lane oh. and will go to the oh, line. Oh, 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 oh. Oliver Campbell with the foul. LZ Gill had visions of a confrontation in his head, but he thought better of it, thinking about the situation. The last thing you want to do is retaliate. And this is a good, clean basketball play. Following Campbell caught him. He didn't drag him from behind. Gill took a, a weird fall, but it wasn't because of following Campbell trying to do anything malicious. So LG Gill now, and that was a great defensive play to get in the passing lane. And really a great substitution to get him back on the floor, in my opinion. Now this half, we've had seven ties and lead changes. For the web, this is your best five in terms of guys making good decisions. Maybe not your best players, but certainly your best decision makers. And this is our eighth one now of the night in this half, I should say. The, the winner of this gets the winner of DRC Ram Nation. Coming up next. And yeah, that'll be our nightcap in a building that should be bananas. What a great night this has been, huh? Great start to our Richmond Regional. Allen, this guy. hanging. This guy. And they're within three. And you know, I, I thought about the pin down. I could just give it to him. He's going to go get you a bucket. Jones with contact in the lane. And they call that an Austin Freeman. Dwayne Gladdens makes that call. But this last possession, Brian Allen doesn't need a double screen pin down. He's just going to split three defenders and pull up, splash in the paint. That is a big time shot at a big time moment. Plus three versus plus four. Two rosters composed primarily of Atlantic 10 alumni, one from George Mason, the Green Machine, and the other, the Web, mostly former Richmond Spiders with a Duquesne Duke sprinkled in. What they want to do, Matt, is talk this over because make or miss, Green Machine basically has a possession 
also win the game if they hit a three. So if you're if you're a web to web, you don't want to give up one shot to end it all. So make or miss, you want to make sure that you don't give up a three to send yourself packing. And I think they just want to be aware of it. But conversely, if you're a green machine and you know that, you need to go to the basket, try to get fouled, and get yourself closer to the Elam ending. You don't need the hero shot. You just need to get there. Sometimes it's easier said than done, though. You and I watched Eberline drive at Team Utah last night. Oh, yeah, wow. Try and go three-point attempt for three-point attempt. Pearson got a hand. They, they, they say he touched it they last. Can, they can look at this, though. And, and I think Clarence Armstrong is going to do just that. Uh, it gives us time to update where we are in some of the other regions. Yeah, give me Bayheim's Army. Elam ending time there. Bayheim's Army up 64-61. Wow. And what's the target score? Do we know? We can't uh, I tell. I don't from know that we yeah. do. Golden Eagles, by the way, 89-72 on Wounded Warriors in Wichita. Mm. All right, let's see. You make the call. Ryan Pearson appeared to hit it first. Question is, does it get touched after that by LG Gill of the web? So looking in this area right here, see Ryan Pearson's fingertips touch that ball. And if LG touched it second, then it's out on him. Now, to me, LG's moving his left hand away wisely. And I think that's uh, because he was making that motion, he made the decision easier. By the way, that target score in Syracuse is 68. 68. So Bayhan's oh. Army is four away. We wow. are D3. Are, are you surprised that they're in Syracuse struggling like that with D3? It's a team that some people think could win $2 million. I mean, sometimes. Some people meaning you. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes that's the hardest one, getting yeah. the first one out of the way, especially with the pressure of playing in front of a home crowd. You wouldn't know that from the way overseas elite dismantled the UMBC alum, but, yeah, I, I take your point. Shot clock more than halfway gone. Nice pick and roll. And Klein gets them the lead back. They're within two. He almost smoked that one away, though. That thing almost came out, but it managed to find the bottom of the net. And now, Sean Fred Jones tried to steal that inbound. Well, they took a foul because they could. And they had a foul to give, and that's what they talked about in that huddle as well. And TJ Klein, <coughs> excuse me, slip into the bucket and the thing almost came out but he was able to keep a lid on it it's hard to believe but the web at one point was down 16. they had a big run at the end of the first half they got five straight points to cut their deficit down to four and they've been a different team since that run so what they're doing is playing for the last shot they're going to try to put Green Machine on the line, and then the web will have a possession to win. So Gil, smart strategy. Gill gets his fourth foul. He'll take his fifth here. And, and this is where I think, as a coach, a little micromanagement would be in order. If you know you're doing this, put someone in the game that doesn't have a lot of fouls. Because it seems like the guy who has the most fouls is the one that's most willing to foul, and he gets himself in trouble unnecessarily. Now the benefit here for Campbell is you do get two free throws, so you can give them the lead. You just can't win unless you would make one and then get a tap back. Yeah, and that's not something you really want to try. Nope. If it happens organically, fine, but that's hard to do. Take your points. Campbell three of four from the line tonight. Green Machine is a team, 14 of 18, now 15 of 19 for almost 79%. And for got them both. For the record, Ryan Pearson, number 24, has five fouls. So he's teetering on disqualification for, for Green Machine. And Gill has five for the web. Jerron Giddings and his guys strategizing. This is drama. This is everything Elam ending brings you. This is what it was made for, to prevent the garbage time at the end of games. Teams don't clear their benches anymore.
guys have to strategize differently. You don't have to foul to stop the clock because you don't have a clock as, a, as a, 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 a component of the game other than the shot clock. And as a result, you get more clean endings. And I love this. Next basket wins. How about that? You ever been in that situation, too? It's playground, next basket wins. It's a great feeling. Absolutely. Especially when you have possession like the web does right now. Bayheim's army, by the way, is a point away in okay. Syracuse. But we are D3 has just made one, one free throw to bring itself to within two. 67-65, so it's plus three versus plus one there. And keep in mind, Green Machine really just needs one point. So if they can get a stop, all they would need is a free throw. So if you're the web, if you don't score here, you're putting yourself in jeopardy because now you got to play defense without fouling. Because they're in the bonus. So get it in first. David Gonzalez, probably their best decision maker. He's got the ball in his hands. Out there with Klein and Jones, Gill and Justin Harper. They get Jones back door oh, for the win. I love it. And they move on. The web running their offense and moving on to the second round. That was reminiscent of Princeton beating Toby Bailey's UCLA team on a similar play that they drew up at the end of the game in the NCAA tournament. Well, that was Gabe Luellis. This time it's Chandre Jones. That was great. All drawn up and executed to perfection. And how about the English from Chandre Jones? Big time play. Well, almost fitting that it was Jones who at the end of the first half knocked down the three to bring them to within four. Yeah, they do not get out of this building without the performance of Dre. It truly was Dre Day. Now what the Elam ending certainly all about. And boy, was this a battle. Nine ties and what ended up being 16 lead changes. Well, what could potentially be a rivalry matchup in the making, provided Ram Nation takes care of its part. But Green Machine is out, and the web moving on to stick around here in Richmond. For my broadcast partner, Tim Scarborough, statistician John Tobias, our producer, Shelby Wilson, and our entire fantastic crew, Matt Martucci, saying so long. It's the web holding on over Green Machine, 94-93.
Let's go. 